Well, hello, nerds. Can you stop screaming? Thank you. Oh, come on, Taggart. I'm just greeting you, my friend. Hello, nerds. <laughs> okay, let us look at some charts. So the first one is which candidates made an outsized impression? So this is a two by two, and it shows on the uh, vertical axis the people's view of the debate performance. And then on the horizontal axis, it is looking at the pre-debate favorability. So what you would expect is that if you had very high pre-debate favorability and then you had a really good debate performance, you'd be in the top right. And then if you had very uh, low favorability and bad performance, you'd be in the bottom left. But then what would be interesting is if you had low debate favorability and very high performance, you'd be in the top left. So that would mean you kind of um, uh, exceed expectations. And then if you were on the bottom right, that would mean you had very high pre-debate favorability, but very low perceived debate performance. Now, the big takeaway on this is basically everybody kind of met expectations. Um, everybody's sort of like tracking that dotted line. However, if you are under the dotted line, like Castro, you see he had pretty favorable pre-debate score, but then he's below neutral on his debate performance. So he kind of underwhelmed and missed expectations. Now you look at Beto O'Rourke, he actually had pretty um, high favorability before the debate, but he also had better than neutral performance of the actual debate. So he's kind of above that dotted line. And then you look at Warren, she had very good favorable, but she also had the most positive view on debate performance. So um, the takeaway, I think, from this chart is Castro was the big loser because he was kind of mean. And if you had to say who was the big winner, I would say it was probably who's kind of furthest from that dotted line, uh, furthest up, probably Warren and Booker. Uh, and uh, Beto and Yang, Yang kind of didn't help or hurt himself too much in terms of people's judgment of the performance. I know a lot of people uh, feel like Yang was a uh, had a big win in terms of getting all the emails from the giveaway, um, but in terms of people's view of his performance, they kind of like he was somewhat favorable before the debate, and they felt he was actually a little bit under neutral. Um, so people weren't thrilled with his debate performance, um, but Castro was the worst. Uh, in fact, in terms of debate performance, Castro was the worst, but Yang and Klobuchar were not that much better. They were all below neutral. You see this horizontal line? You don't want to be under this line here. Okay, so now let's look at the next chart. Before I go to the next chart, let's see what people in the chat have said. Uh, <laughs> oh God, you guys are funny. Um, someone's asking me, I no, why, why won't I be able to vote? I'm an American citizen. Just because you live overseas uh, does not mean you give up your, your right to, uh, to vote. Uh, WT, first timer, welcome. Uh, Arian says, don't, don't listen to Tiger. We love the screaming. I will try to keep, keep the screaming to, uh, a moderate level, but every now and then I'm just going to have to say hello nerds. Okay. Uh, Josh, yes, I can vote. U.S. citizens overseas can vote. It's uh, absentee ballot. Um, Ooh, Alex L is saying that 7% in California. Wow. 
past Kamala and Pete. That's awesome. Maybe if we have time, we'll look at some polls. Um, I think that's enough for the comments. Let's move on to our next chart. Nerds. Freaking nerds. All right. I love, I love nerds. Here we go. Now this shows, what does it show? Before debate and then support after the debate. So this is the respondents who are considering voting for each candidate according to the Ipsos poll before and after the third debate. So what you want to see is you want to see movement from left to right. And basically, who has the biggest movement from left to right? Elizabeth Warren. Uh, nerds for Yang. That's right, Casa Station. I forgot to add the nerds for Yang. Um, Elizabeth Warren went from 44.4 to 48. Biden dropped. He went in the wrong direction. He went left. You don't want to go left. You want to move to the right. So he went from 56.6 to 55.8. It's probably within the margin of error, though. Um, so I'm not sure I would read in too much that little slight drop. Bernie had a another slight drop, or maybe it was the same. Um, let's see. Ooh, Buttigieg went from 21 to 24, um, about two percentage points. No, Warren still had a bigger jump. She had almost... Uh, 3.6 percentage point jump. And then Yang, Yang did, actually Yang had, you know, a 1.7% uh, percentage point jump. So about a 10% jump from 9.1 to 10.8. So Yang did help himself. And then Julian Castro, he went left, but he didn't drop that much. I think Julian supporters are kind of with him. And they're probably not going to move off until he leaves. And then hopefully they move to us. So big takeaway, uh, if you're a Warren fan, she had the best night. If you're a Buttigieg fan, he had a pretty solid night. And if you're a Yang fan, yeah, he had a good night. But so did Booker and so did Beto. The big loser was probably Biden and Castro. If I had to pick between the two, I would imagine Castro was a bigger loser. Okay, next. All right, this is one that I have showed in a previous stream, but since many of you were not there, I'm going to show it again. Okay, so this is a cool chart. On the left-hand side, you'll see um, all of the candidates, and then on across the, the columns, you'll see which other candidate is being considered by the people on the left. So for Biden, you see 17% of Biden voters are considering Booker. Who is the biggest overlap with Biden supporters? They are also looking at Warren. In fact, if you look across all of these freaking candidates, Warren is generally the top second choice. Ugh. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. She's uh, she's our competition, nerds. It's going to come down to Yang and Warren. That's that's how it's going to go down if, if I had to make some predictions. Um, she's pulling it from everyone. And then you could ask yourself, well, who is Yang attractive to um, for other candidates? Yang, 29% of Castro people are also considering... Andrew M.F. Yang, okay? 22% of Cloby voters are thinking Yang. And 19% of Booker voters are thinking Yang. But my God, most of them are thinking Warren. And then for Yang, <laughs> Kamasama 603, throw some mud at her. Well, I don't know. Uh, let's not let's not take out the the sharp knives yet. Um, you know, we have our concerns about Warren. I mean, my biggest concern of Warren is that the general election. You know, can you imagine Trump supporters going for Warren, or will they say, "Well, 
The same reason they didn't vote for Hillary, maybe they won't vote for Warren because Warren seems to kind of elitist, um, whereas Yang is more of an everyday man, and he too hates the Patriots, which will win 90% of the country. Um, but who who is Yang potentially vulnerable to? Well, for one thing, if you look here, Yang has 42% of Yang supporters would consider mostly... 42% Biden, but our biggest one is Sanders and Warren. So if you guys are in the Nerds for Yang channel now, this poll predicts that you are probably open to Warren and Sanders. And who are you least open to? You are least open to Cloby. You are not open to Castro. Is that accurate? Well, there's some people that are saying Yang or Bust. But many of you probably would consider Sanders or Warren, and you're not feeling Cloby or Castro, which I think describes myself, although I'm not really feeling Biden either, or Booker, or Buttigieg. <laughs> Hopefully our boy Yang gets there. All right, so that's kind of cool. I think the takeaway is freaking Warren is pulling from everyone, and we could maybe pull from Castro or Booker. And Sanders and Warren are pulling from us. All right. This is the favorability rating before and after the, yeah, see? Tula's mom, Tan. Yeah, she agrees. I tell you. Freaking Warren, I don't know. I think Trump would have a field day with her. Okay, but let's look at before. This is not who they think won the debate or who they think lost the debate, but what is your favorability of this candidate before the debate? And then they take another poll. What is your favorability of this candidate? And who had the biggest change? Freaking Beto. Oh, my God. Remember when we thought that that fine fellow was done and he was Audi 5000? Beto had a huge jump from 23.9% favorable to 32 and a half. Remember, everybody was like, oh, Beto, I have so much respect for you. I mean, I get it. I get that he's taken a hard stand on, on gun control, and I, res I respect that. But it doesn't change the fact that Beto is still a pretty lightweight candidate. And I don't think – I think – does anybody think Beto would do well – Mano a mano with Trump? I don't think so. I think he would. I don't think that would end well. Warren, okay. She had plus seven and a half. That's not surprising. We we knew that. Klobuchar had a boost in favorability. What? Oh my God. She went from eight to 14. Buttigieg went up. Yang really didn't move up that much. He went up two points. Two percentage points in favorability. Now, this is where, you know, we can have the debate, but um, the debate about the debate. But I think this is where he had two things might not have helped him. One was the the giveaway offer at the beginning. I know people wrote about it in the news. I know it drove a lot of signups. But, I mean, you look at the favorability numbers, that didn't go up. And I also think the... And we've talked about this uh, on Twitter, but I am I think we need to kind of dial down the number of uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek Asian uh, stereotype jokes. Like, oh, I, I'm Asian. I know a lot of doctors. You know, I'm Asian. I like to work. You know, I'm, all, I'm fine with the, the opposite of Trump as an Asian man who likes math. I think that's a great one. It kind of shows that he doesn't take himself too seriously. But if every answer he drops in an Asia bomb, like, I don't know. I am i don't know if that's helping us. Uh, so that's that chart. Takeaway is freaking Beto had the biggest uh, boost in favorability change. And Warren and Cloby. I was surprised. Cloby. I didn't really think she was that strong. Do you guys remember anything that Klobuchar said? Oh, did she say... You may have wrote the damn bill, but I read the damn bill. I don't know. I didn't think that was that good. Okay, next. Who spoke the most? 
Biden, 3,000 words, and Yang, less than half of Biden. But you know what's interesting? You don't need to say a lot of words because Beto had this big boost, and he only spoke 1,700 words. I mean, I think maybe the biggest takeaway here is that it wasn't uh, the kind of crazy uh, mismatch that you saw with NBC's debate when you know it felt like Yang had like a quarter of what uh, the other candidates had. And so, you know, um, I think Yang, not shocked that he spoke the least, wish he spoke more, but it wasn't like he was one-tenth of the top speaker, um, just about half. Now, this is a really cool chart. On the left-hand side is the number of words spoken and on the right-hand side is the polling support. So here, you could argue that the person who's polling the most should get to speak the most. So if you're polling around 30, you should be way up here. And then the person who's polling the least should speak the least. Well, in this case, Yang kind of um, meets that criteria. So what's interesting about this chart? What's interesting about this chart is if you are polling very little, but you're talking a lot. Look at Cory Booker. My God, that guy's like, like reading a Shakespearean play, and he's basically polling almost the same as Andrew. So he's almost like around this like zero to three percent range. But dude spoke two thousand seven hundred and fifty words. Versus Yang's 1,500-ish. Beto spoke a little bit more, but he kind of stayed in his lane for to some extent. And then Bernie, Bernie kind of like underspoke because you could argue if you have a diagonal line here, then Bernie should be a little higher. He should have spoken more like 2,100, 2,200. Instead, he spoke about 1,800 words. And then you've got Harris and Warren kind of speaking a little bit more than they should have, but not too much. I would say the biggest outlier is Cory Booker, Castro. Look at Castro. He's to the left of Yang in terms of less polling support, but spoke over 2,100 words versus Yang's 1,600. So you got Castro, less polling support, way more words. Beto, similar polling support, more words. Amy Klobuchar, less polling support, way more words. So um, I don't think people heard enough from Yang compared to other candidates, and I think that then makes it harder for him to rise in the polls. Okay, next chart. Who talked the most about Trump? Uh, Harris which was interesting because we knew she was going to be Ms. Prosecutor. And now we know that sh her target was Harris. Sorry, it was Trump. Uh, it's getting late. And then the second was Castro. He was just on the attack for everybody. That's interesting. Yang only mentioned Trump twice. And Clobe didn't at all. And Warren only mentioned Trump once and Buttig Buttigieg and Biden. That's kind of interesting that they chose not to.